Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. 48 DRS after McCain passed, deathbed secret he tried to take to grave surfaces. 134 people died. The passing of Senator John McCain, Azar, has been met with mixed emotions. Some view his passing as that of a war hero that should be celebrated. His family and friends mourn his passing. There are yet others that believe his legacy is one of continuous betrayal of the American people and this faction views the passing of McCain as an opportunity. Last summer, McCain made public the news that he had been diagnosed with an aggressive glioblastoma, and the prognosis was serious. He had recently made the decision to stop treatments and was 81 years old when he died. His death exposed some serious hypocrisy by both the mainstream media and by the left, as well as forcing them to show their anti-Trump agenda. In life, McCain was one of President Donald Trump's harshest critics and instrumental in the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller and the subsequent investigation into collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia in the 2016 presidential election by hand-delivering the salacious and fictional Steele dossier to former FBI Director James Comey. This dossier was used as the basis for the FISA warrants that were used to spy on the Trump campaign and a host of additional government malfeasance in a concerted effort to overthrow a duly elected American president. McCain also caused much bitterness and animosity amongst the American people when he chose to return to the Senate in July 2017 after emergency brain surgery to become the deciding vote that killed the GOP's repeal of the Affordable Care Act. Rather than take the higher road, McCain even went so far as to publicly demand President Trump not attend his funeral, instead insisting that Vice President Mike Pence attend the service in Washington's National Cathedral. The New York Times report. His intimates have informed the White House that their current plan for his funeral is for Vice President Mike Pence to attend the service to be held in Washington's National Cathedral but not President Trump, with whom Mr. McCain has had a rocky relationship. Meanwhile, McCain associates were busily spreading the word, albeit quietly, that they want a McCain person to eventually fill his Senate seat, a roster that includes his wife, Cindy. Then it continues with, the matter of succession for the McCain seat a topic of such intense discussion that Republicans' officials here joke that Washington lawyers know Arizona election law better than any attorney in the state, is officially verboten among party officials and the senator's friends. They are determined to reward him with the same good ending that his friend Senator Edward M. Kennedy enjoyed before he succumbed to brain cancer in 2009. And mainstream media sources continue to eulogize McCain as some sort of a national hero after his death. The New York Times for example in an article entitled, John McCain war hero, senator, presidential contender, dies at 81 dash. John S. McCain, the proud naval aviator who climbed from depths of despair as a prisoner of war in Vietnam to pinnacles of power as a Republican congressman and senator from Arizona and a two-time contender for the presidency, died on Saturday at his home in Arizona. He was 81. The Washington Post in an article entitled, John McCain, Maverick of the Senate and Former POW, dies at 81. U.S. Senator John S. McCain the son, and grandson of four-star admirals, was bred for combat. He endured more than five years of imprisonment and torture by the North Vietnamese as a young naval officer and went on to battle foes on the left and the right in Washington, driven throughout by a code of honor that both defined and haunted him. CNN in an article entitled, John McCain, Senator, and Former Presidential Candidate, dies at 81. Whenever America was in a fight during his long lifetime, John McCain was in the thick of it. McCain who has died at the age of 81, was a naval bomber pilot, prisoner of war, conservative maverick, giant of the Senate, twice defeated presidential candidate and an abrasive American hero with a twinkle in his eye. Yet when McCain was running for president himself against the self-appointed and media-perpetuated patron saint of the Democratic Party, Barack Obama, these same media outlets will attack the same naval record they just eulogized. Effectively attacking McCain's military record. Yet when President Trump chose to do so he was derided and attacked. McCain's achievement? His public opposition to the Trump administration. That opposition earned him eulogies and accolades that may have been unearned in life. McCain himself wrote in his memoir Faith of My Fathers, I crashed a plane in Corpus Christi Bay one Saturday morning. The engine quit while I was practicing landings, I took a few painkillers and hit the sack to rest my aching back for a few hours, I was out carousing, injured back and all, later that evening. Then the Washington Post also spoke of the controversy that surrounds a series of crashes involving planes piloted by McCain while he served in the U.S. Navy and an official investigation by the Naval Aviation Safety Center makes clear that the first accident, in March 1960, was caused exclusively by pilot error. 
During the course of his flying career with the U.S. Navy, John McCain was involved in at least five major mishaps or crashes involving his plane. The most dramatic incidents occurred in 1967. He barely escaped with his life after a missile exploded aboard an aircraft carrier, the USS Forrestal, in July of that year, killing 134 of his fellow crew members. In October, McCain was shot down over Vietnam by a surface-to-air missile. U.S. Navy records make clear that no blame can be attached to McCain for either of these incidents. McCain was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross on his return from Vietnam and cited for his superb airmanship in the abortive raid on the power plant in Hanoi that ended with his capture and imprisonment by the North Vietnamese. Mystery has surrounded the precise circumstances of the three earlier incidents, and particularly an accident on March 12, 1960, while McCain was still in flight school at Corpus Christi in Texas. The McCain campaign has either ignored or failed to respond to requests by The Washington Post and other news organizations for the release of the candidate's full military records, which could shed light on the accidents and the pilot's personal involvement. The official Navy report into the Corpus Christi accident on March 12, 1960, concludes that the AD-6 Sky Raider trainer crashed because McCain failed to maintain an airspeed above the stall speed. It attributed the accident to the preoccupation of the pilot coupled with a power setting too low to maintain level flight. The single-engine prop plane sank to the bottom of Corpus Christi Bay. McCain was rescued by a helicopter after swimming to the surface. The accident report excluded a series of other possible factors, including engine failure and disorientation of the pilot due to vertigo. It recorded pilot error as the sole contributing factor to the accident. A copy of the report was obtained by the Washington Post from the Democratic National Committee, which conducted research at the Naval Historical Center in Washington. McCain's responsibility for the accident was first reported by the Los Angeles Times here. McCain had another accident with a T-2 trainer jet in November 1965, while flying between New York City and Norfolk, Virginia. The Naval Aviation Safety Center was unable to determine the precise cause of the accident or the degree of pilot error. McCain wrote later that his engine flamed out and he had to eject. In his autobiography, McCain recalls another mishap around December 1961 when I knocked down some power lines while flying too low over southern Spain. My daredevil clowning had cut off electricity to a great many Spanish homes and created a small international incident. He landed his Sky Raider back on the USS Intrepid after the incident, which does not appear to have triggered a safety investigation. Politico wrote in 2008 when McCain was running against Obama in the 2008 presidential election dash. But farther to the left and among some of McCain's conservative enemies as well, harsher attacks are circulating. Critics have accused McCain of war crimes for bombing targets in Hanoi in the 1960s. A widely read liberal blog on Sunday accused McCain of disloyalty during his captivity in Vietnam for his coerced participation in propaganda films and interviews after he had been tortured. A lot of people don't know, that McCain made a propaganda video for the enemy while he was in captivity, wrote americablog.com's John Aravosis. Putting that bit of disloyalty aside, what exactly is McCain's military experience that prepares him for being commander-in-chief? There is a faction of Americans that believe McCain did not indeed return from Vietnam a hero, claiming his own clumsiness caused his broken limbs as he ejected from his plummeting warplane. They also claim he was never tortured but instead collaborated with not only the North Vietnamese but with communists in the Soviet Union and Cuba. Two former POWs who say they were senior officers at a camp where McCain claims to have been tortured state they knew of no such torture during that time at that camp. McCain has denied that he ever reported to these men. Yet adding fire to that particular rumor, were the accusations that throughout McCain's political life he behaved with a significant amount of disrespect towards Vietnam veterans. They claim McCain unfairly preyed on family members of POWs selling them false hopes in the form of fake pictures with their loved ones. Sometimes McCain's account was proven accurate. Other times it was a false and clearly very painful for surviving family members grieving and struggling for closure. In 1992 McCain did everything in his power to stonewall the release of POW documents in an effort to determine if additional prisoners were still being held. Shortly after hearings before the Senate Select Committee on POW MIA Affairs, POW advocates, and experts, as well as Republican politicians, including then-Representative Bob Dornan of California as well as the group known as Vietnam Veterans Against McCain accused McCain of stonewalling the release of POW documents because his own records included transcripts of interviews he gave to communist and other media outlets in which he said the U.S. military had deliberately bombed civilian targets in North Vietnam. Perhaps most of all, these Americans feel McCain used his POW status to spring up the political ranks, with his eye on an eventual presidential prize and in effect sold them out. 
That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.